Doesn't it astonish that in the today and now and in the Egyptian region, we are constantly finding the treasures of an ancient civilization that has long since vanished? The size and scale of this ancient civilization is not understood to the average person because if you consider the plundering through the ages, not only by grave robbers but by armies of emerging empires, then you would have to take into consideration not only the value of these things, but also how much treasure has actually been taken. This leaves us with a monetary value richer than all the other treasures on the planet from other various empires who simply piggybacked on the lost empire's wealth. And it is widely thought that only around a 5% of the ancient and lost empire's treasures have been unearthed to date. Hence the expression that we are building upon the ruins of the gods. The point we are making here guys is this. If the dynastic Egyptians really were the pyramid builders, then you are cramming an era said to be only three to 4,000 of years into a period of time where apparently everything happened. Only problem is that it doesn't fit and the dynastic people of Egypt were incapable of the undertaking of the Great Pyramid. Not only this, but they do in fact tell us that they existed after the gods. This means they are telling us there was a previous civilization before dynastic times. Wait till you hear this. The explosion of interest in Egypt isn't new. It has been ongoing for as long as time can stretch. And the taking of the artifacts has to stretch the ages. The utter scale of what has been taken from Egypt and what continues to be taken is on a scale that would see most countries' riches having dried up long ago. Yet at Egypt, we aren't even scratching the surface. It must be said that if such a test exists, that can date the existence of hieroglyphics separate from the stone they are carved upon, then we must have that done in an attempt to separate the dynastic Egyptians from that of the true builders of the ancient monuments. Excavations of Egypt's ancient sites continues daily with each new discovery offering insight into the intricacies of a civilization that made striking advances in nearly every area of human knowledge. We only be scratching the surface, but already it's becoming clear that this was a highly advanced people, a people who are obviously key to our ancient understanding and perhaps even key to our future survival. The wealth and power of the ancients isn't felt in today's world. The Egypt of today isn't capitalizing on its ancient story. And at sites like that of the silver Pharaoh's tomb, we see a wealth on show that proves at least 3,000 years of plundering. We have said it before that the civilization who emerged here around 5,000 years ago were not the builders of these things, but indeed the survivors of the ancient cataclysm. It didn't take these people three or 4,000 years to build the place because it was already here. They simply re-inhabited the ancient place and adopted its wealth, which is still being uncovered. So 5,000 years of the taking of such riches is still only returning 5%? The Silver Pharaoh's tomb discovered raised many questions, including one in which we hadn't thought of before. That being that the ancient Egyptians had far more power and wealth than what had been previously assumed based on the notion that Egypt emerged 5,000 years ago. We are now realizing this was a second separate emergence of a civilization that survived something cataclysmic. They reoccupied the great empire lands 5,000 years ago. It was already there. The Pharaoh's tomb is up there with King Tut's treasure. In fact, it is probably more valuable. The reason you are not knowing about the silver Pharaoh is because he was initially discovered in 1940 during the Second World War. In 1990, there were efforts to bring this to the world's attention, but it seems that there was only room for one ancient Egyptian king in popular culture. The Silver Pharaoh's name is Susans I, and he is probably the most underrated Egyptian discovery of all time. 
The kings and pharaohs of dynastic Egypt surrounded themselves with treasures mostly fashioned from gold. This was not so much out of the motives of greed, but because they believed that the proximity of gold would ensure that pharaohs would receive the gift of eternal life. The gold was probably already in existence in some fashion, but unclear if it was fashioned during dynastic times or indeed in ancient times. Susans I was a chief priest of the sun god Amun at Tanis and traced his family lineage back to the great pharaoh Ramses I. Susan's name means the star appearing in the city. His highly refined, very sophisticated gold death mask was to be his face in the world to come. This would suggest that the people of this period were preparing themselves to leave the earth. There are mummies everywhere from this period. In fact, there are millions in existence. Don't you think that the sarcophagus, the mask, everything about this process would suggest they were trying to replicate something like a hibernation chamber, possibly for interstellar travel? We should probably point out that no sarcophagus exists from the previous civilization. It's as if these people saw something that worked. Ancients disappeared and they tried to replicate it. Maybe, just maybe. Gold became the perfect motive for tomb robbers to desecrate the sacred graves of their pharaohs. One inscription found tells us, the noble mummy of the king was entirely laid over with gold, and we found the queen likewise. We collected together all that we found on her also, and divided it into eight shares. Many outstanding works of the goldsmiths art crafted during the dynastic period in Egypt are now in museums around the world. These surviving jewels bear witness not only to a very refined and lavish art, but also the preoccupation and belief in the importance of entering the realm of the afterlife, a thought born not of their imagination, but of things these people once saw many thousands of years earlier to replicate and follow in the footsteps of the gods. The ancient Egyptians established a civilization that was envied and admired for 3,000 years. In life, jewelry was not just a colorful accessory to their simple costume. It denoted rank or honor and also offered protection. After death, it was buried with its owner together with special pieces of jewelry made especially for the funeral. Treasures that were built to be more important in another world than they were on Earth. The perils to be met in the next world, as described in the many religious texts that have survived, were far more threatening than anything found in this world. This meant the deceased would therefore need all the protective devices available to assist them in their passage of this very real place. You would have to consider that they knew more than we are understanding them as having known. Ancient Greek scholar and historian Herodotus traveled to Egypt in 450 BCE. His written accounts have provided us with aspects of the life of ancient Egyptians. He recorded in it such a way that it offers the sort of detail that goes way beyond the scope and ability of just pictorial material and inscriptions to convey or explain. He suggested connections between the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods. He was fascinated by the animal cults, so popular at the time of his Egypt. His descriptions bring the world of the ancient Egyptian alive and paintings and reliefs frequently confirm the accuracy of his observations. The tomb of the silver pharaoh is one of the most startling discoveries ever found. Inside the tomb was the silver sarcophagus in which the body was held. It was made of exquisite detail and craftsmanship unmatched in the world, never mind Egypt. No other silver sarcophagus has ever been found and it is now recognized by many Egyptologists and experts alike as one of the most exquisite artifacts of ancient Egypt ever to be found. The elaborate tribute within the tomb suggests it was the burial site of someone very important. Using the hieroglyphs inside the tomb, they pieced together the identity of the pharaoh, his powerful role in ancient Egypt, and why he received such grand treatment. His throne name translates as, Great are the manifestations of Ra, chosen of Amun. What we are witness to here, guys, is the most underrated discovery in the history of Egypt. What do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.